Waukee Mayor Courtney Clark, and thank you to all for joining us tonight for this year's Waukee State of the City Address. If you're here tonight, you are already invested in the vibrant Waukee community, and you already know that we're growing and thriving. A large part of our success can be attributed to smart planning. I would like to thank the Waukee City Council for their work in making Waukee what it is today. I think we're a little limited in terms of council members tonight, but if you are here, please stand as I say your name. Thank you to Mayor Pro Tem, Charlie Bottenberg, Council Member Anna Bergman-Pierce, Council Member Chris Crone, Council Member Larry Lyon, who's in Florida and ditched us all, and Council Member Ben Sinclair. <laughs> These council members are your committed at-large public servants. The council and I work closely with city staff to set priorities and to make decisions related to everything from pub public project funding to rezoning applications and business site plan approvals and so on. The next group of people I would like to recognize for moving Waukee forward are our board and commission volunteers. The city of Waukee currently has five boards which work to help share pub uh, shape public policy and assist in various advisory capacities. I would like to thank these dedicated volunteers who currently serve in those roles. Please stand if you are in attendance. Thank you to the Waukee Board of Adjustment members who review requests for variances to official city zoning ordinances. Cole Bisgard, Juan Garcia, Bryce Johnson, Cynthia Sawyer, and Tanner Westberg. Thank you to the Waukee Board of Appeals members who review variance requests from the Waukee Building Code. Phil Janiri, Jim Marwadell, Michael Prospero, Jessica Smith, Aubrey Ward, Lindsay White, and Travis Webker. Thank you to the Waukee, <laughs> thank you to the Waukee Public Library Board of Trustees members who are responsible for reviewing library operations. Miranda Jukic, Kate Gabrielson, Mickey Henderson, Apollinaire Kabakayembe, Emily Schultz, Jared Starkweather, and Connie Thiens. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to the Waukee Parks Board members for reviewing parks and recreation proposals and for volunteering at our, their time at city festivals. Blake Crow, Bridget Horvatten, Mackenzie Kaplan, Josh Leffelholtz, Megan McAtee, Cal Ora, Ali Payne, Kelly Steyert, and Troy Taylor. And finally, thank you to the Waukee Planning and Zoning Commission members who consider rezoning, plats, site plans, and more prior to City Council review. Casey Gerlitz, Hannah Inman, Luke Street, Angela Tissau, Frank Hoyfelt, Cherry and Koshi, and Alex Broderick. Please join me in thanking these community volunteers. Certainly though, the city of Waukee could not serve the public in the manner it does and manage the growth that we've seen without our amazing team of 130 plus full-time employees and our dozens of part-time and seasonal team members. Thank you to the city staff members for all of your hard work. We know we have the best staff and we appreciate you every day. We also acknowledge and appreciate community and business partnerships, the school district, Chamber, area business leaders, local nonprofits, and other supporting agencies all make up important pieces of the Waukee puzzle. Thank you for all you do. Each spring, the City Council, key staff members, and I take on strategic planning, during which we identify the top city goals for the year to come. Through this process, we balance the needs we hear from all residents with the needs our staff sees as critical to continue to serve our residents. Last year, the policy agenda included such items as collaborating with Metro Cities to meet Waukee's long-term water supply needs, preparing a master plan for the development of green space, initiating the design process for a new public safety building, and updating the city's economic development action plan, among several others. As we prepare to set the agenda for fiscal year 2023, let's take a moment to look back at some of our successes from the past year. We were thrilled to hear that the independent economics website Money ranked Waukee 11th on its list of 50 best places to live in the US based on job growth, home prices, and quality of life. Waukee previously ranked 42nd on the list in 2015. 
This jump in ranking revealed what we here in Waukee already know, that the key to good living we strive to uphold is more than just a tagline. We're making it a reality. As the fastest growing city in Iowa, it was no surprise when the 2020 census numbers revealed 74% community growth since 2010. Waukee's official population is now 23,940 and climbing. It is uh, possible the city's population could reach 35,000 by 2030. A question that I get regularly, and I know other council members do as well, is whether we should slow down growth. We at the city are not property owners or developers, so unfortunately we cannot control how fast that process occurs. What we can control is how we plan for it and planning for it appropriately. As the community expands, the need for investment in infrastructure remains. City leaders plan far in advance, carefully prioritizing budget items to allow for the addition of new streets, water, sewer, and gas mains, and amenities such as parks and trails. In this last fiscal year, we invested $45 million in public improvement projects. Crews transformed the intersection of Warrior Lane and Ashworth Drive to a new roundabout, 10th Street, Northwest 10th Street was expanded, and Sunrise Drive was built to serve the new Stratford Crossing neighborhood and Northwest High School. Second Street recently opened from Hickman to the high school, and Ashworth Road at and east of Grand Prairie Parkway was improved, and work continues to expand Ashworth Road west of Ute Avenue. Crews also installed 37,570 feet of water main and 40,601 feet of sanitary sewer in Waukee in 2021. The new Glen Village Park and Alice Nizzi Parks opened to community members this year and nearly one mile of trail surface was added to the Kettlestone Trail system. And the new Kettlestone Village Pond was constructed, providing yet another public fishing destination, something I know our residents have been excited about. Development is thriving as more residents and businesses are attracted to the vibrancy of Waukee. The city issued 1,781 building permits in 2021 for a valuation of more than $330 million. 21 plats were approved for development and a record 672 single family homes were constructed. The new Kettlestone Entertainment District, Keytown Loop, broke ground this fall. This 40 acre development will feature a Live Nation music venue, a Marriott Aloft Hotel, and more. And businesses such as Home Sweet Cone, Busy Pay, Safe Splash Swim School, Quick Star, Hyper Energy Bar, and Kinder Care all opened locations in Waukee in 2021. Enrichment programs and community events serve the public by way of the Waukee Parks and Recreation Department and the Waukee Public Library. In 2021, the Parks and Rec team held 10 days of special events welcoming thousands of people. More than 5,000 kids and adults participated in cl camps, classes, and sports leagues. And 265 low-cost trees were distributed through the Waukee Canopy Program. The Waukee Public Library was an incredibly busy place as well. Staff put on 250 programs for 9,000 attendees. A whopping 185,000 materials were checked out and staff counted more than 46,000 patron visits. The committed teams at the Waukee Police and Fire Departments worked tirelessly to keep the community safe. They saw their calls for service increase again this year. Police responded to more than 15,600 calls and the fire department responded to more than 2,300 calls. They also continued to provide crime and fire prevention outreach. That's a quick recap of highlights from the past year, but looking into the present and the future, there's even more to be excited about. I would be remiss if I did not take this moment to recognize city administrator, Tim Mormon for his strong leadership and visionary presence in Waukee over the last nine years. Tim is planning to retire at the end of this month. I'm still mad about it. We as an organization greatly benefited from his decades of experience and his incredible insight into what it takes to not only lead an effective staff, but to be forward thinking and aim for the stars. Tim, thank you so much and congratulations on this milestone. Just Monday at, this, at the March 7th regular city council meeting, the contract for the new Waukee city administrator was approved. 
it is my pleasure to congratulate current Assistant City Administrator Brad Dietz as he prepares to take the reins. Brad joined the Waukee Community Development Department in 2006, and he was pivotal in leading comprehensive community planning, advancing economic development, and supporting residential growth since that time. He was promoted from Community Development Director to Assistant City Administrator in June of last year and has been working closely with Tim to prepare for this transition. Brad is an incredibly hard worker with city historical knowledge and strong staff, resident, and business partner relationships. He will certainly continue Tim's progress and top-notch service to the public. <laughs> you can clap to that. <laughs> I mentioned strategic planning earlier tonight, and certainly the city's annual budget and capital improvements plan are strategic planning tools. The city council will vote on the fiscal year 2023 budget on March 21st. Our number one budget directive for this upcoming fiscal year is to lower property taxes. This is an important priority many residents have voiced and the city council has listened. If approved, the fiscal year 2023 budget will reduce the city's portion of property owner's tax levy by 20 cents. That levy will go from 1330 to 1310 per every thousand dollars of valuation. We are fortunate to have the growth here in Waukee that adds to the community's total valuation. The fact that people keep moving here and investing in business here enables us to continue to consider this tax rate decrease without cutting services or amenities. In the capital improvements plan this upcoming year, the city will take on phase two of the Warrior Lane Improvements Project, widening the roads south of the roundabout by the library and Waukee Middle School. This is important for connectivity as we move towards improvements to university. We're also working with the school district to install more parking on site. Work will take place this spring and summer. Northwest High School families will be very glad to hear that there will soon be expanded access. The city will be placing asphalt overlay on Meredith Drive from Warrior Lane to Northwest 10th Street this summer. And the work that started last year to extend Douglas Parkway from Badger to Warrior Lane will be completed this year. Next year, Douglas Parkway will be completed from Warrior West, connecting to the already completed segment by Northwest 10th Street and beyond. And work to extend Ashworth Road west of 6th Street will continue this year as well. Sticking with roads and traffic, the city completed a traffic signal synchronization project, which sounds very exciting, in 2021 to improve traffic flow along our corridors. It is actually very exciting as we recognize that traffic along Hickman and Grand Prairie Parkway is a primary consideration for those in Waukee. Also a fun fact, the city recently hired a full-time traffic signal technician who will be responsible for, for preventative maintenance of the city's traffic signal equipment, resulting in a proactive approach to any potential failures or malfunctions. This will hopefully decrease travel time and frustrations and increase safety for Waukee drivers and pedestrians as we work toward provi providing more consistent travel conditions. Looking ahead to next year, I am thrilled to reveal the plans for phase one of the University Avenue Extension Project. This is a multi-year project to extend University from Warrior Lane to 10th Street past the Public Works building. This is not only critical to add more east-west connectivity through our city, but it will also be a premier project that includes many of the considerations we hear regularly from our residents. Improvement of greenways, inclusion of trails, stormwater enhancement, maintaining sp space relative to nearby housing, and more. It will include the addition of a new greenway and trail connection through the Sugar Creek Corridor and will provide pedestrian connection for residents from Centennial Park to the area on which the future Civic Campus will be built. And I can tell you're wondering, what is the Civic Campus? It's a 225 plus acre property which the city is in the process of acquiring at the western part of Waukee. Right now, it is in the preliminary planning process and the city will to soon take on master planning for the site. Details will emerge as we plan for future facilities and uses. But what we do know is that it will become a central community space providing new opportunities for residents and visitors. One of the many infrastructure considerations that we discuss with our regional partners is management of stormwater, 
to avoid downstream impacts on neighboring cities. In the next three years, the city will invest in strategic storm water management efforts, aiming to not only improve our headwaters and water flow for Waukee and neighboring communities, but also providing more amenities for our residents. Recent examples of this include the addition of ponds at the Waukee Public Library and Triumph Park. These ponds and other projects help to direct stormwater runoff, but they also help improve water quality and decrease water contamination. Something I know people are more excited about is the expansion of Kettlestone development. Construction of the highly anticipated Keytown Loop attraction will take shape this year, opening in late 2023. And the Iowa Clinic recently announced its plans to build a new multi-specialty medical center at the corner of Tallgrass Lane and Grand Prairie Parkway with an opening date of 2024. The city's vision for Kettlestone became a reality in 2015 when Grand Prairie Parkway opened. And with the infrastructure in place, the previously planned 30-year build-out of the area is moving more quickly than expected. Let's take a look at today's Kettlestone Walkie. The City of Waukee's premier mixed-use Kettlestone development is a community builder. This land, all 1,300 acres, continues to serve as a roadmap toward endless possibilities and countless opportunities for business leaders, residents, and visitors. You can see the growth. You can feel the excitement. This is the future. How will you establish your presence in Kettlestone? Over the next decade, Kettlestone will continue to evolve as a premier Iowa landing point for economic and job opportunities, housing, hospitality, medical services, retail, entertainment, sports tourism, and so much more. From shopping, dining, and personal care services to parks, ponds, and nearly six miles of trails linking neighborhoods to business areas, this area embodies the same spirit that can be found within the vibrant and rapidly growing city of Waukee. Located in Dallas County, the nation's fourth fastest growing county, Waukee grew by 74% in the last decade. There are more than 25,000 people who reside in the two miles surrounding Kettlestone, and nearly 100,000 live in the surrounding five mile radius. Nestled near Interstate 80 and just a short drive from downtown Des Moines, Kettlestone is already home to numerous businesses small and large, enriching and impacting the region in so many ways with restaurants to enjoy delicious meals and treats, and providers like dentists and doctors to help keep you healthy and living life to its fullest. Every day in Kettlestone will offer you top-tier amenities and resources, especially with the Keytown Loop, poised to open in fall 2023, which will be the city of Waukee's centerpiece of entertainment and recreational activities for families and people of all ages. Expected to draw more than 350,000 people to Waukee annually, the Keytown Loop will feature a 3,500-seat live performance venue, two hotels, and a 100-unit apartment complex, as well as additional restaurants and shops. Housing continues to expand in Kettlestone as well, with a wide variety of options and styles available today and more on the horizon. Safe neighborhoods, well-kept roads, and an excellent school district are big draws for those who choose to live and raise families in Waukee. And as Kettlestone continues to take shape and transition from vision to reality, maintaining that hometown feel is vital in honoring the foundation which Waukee was built upon. It's no secret that Waukee is on the rise, and Kettlestone is a big reason why. Grow with Kettlestone. Live, work, and play in Kettlestone. Be a builder of Waukee and Central Iowa. Find your success here and call Kettlestone home. Thank you to marketing agency Bing Bang, which is located in Kettlestone for its partnership in producing that fantastic video. Another long anticipated project, Apple's Waukee Data Center is moving forward. Earlier this week, the city council approved platting and construction drawings for the first phase of the project. The site plan will head to, uh, will head to city council for consideration soon. The data center will be built near the intersection of Hickman Road and S Avenue. Roughly 300 acres of the 2,000 acre site will be developed in this first phase, which includes one data center, one administration building, one maintenance building, and four network distribution buildings. Construction is anticipated to begin later this spring. We expect nearly 800 trades jobs to be generated by the project, as well as 50 long-term jobs per pair of data center buildings. 
We look forward to Apple's investments in our community and an ongoing partnership. Let's shift now from business development to housing development. The council and I believe that people who work in Waukee should be able to have options to live in Waukee. This improves hiring for our business community and it just makes sense as a welcoming community. We also know that metro-wide affordability is a key issue for residents and for our businesses looking to attract and retain talent. Affordable housing is therefore on the city council's list of priorities. In response to that, the city has purchased 16 acres of land to allow for future development of affordable housing options for both families and seniors. Our investment in public improvements near this piece of land will help prepare the property and the city will identify a developer which specializes in affordable housing. Our hope is that construction will begin in 2023. We also recognize that people move to Waukee because our city is safe and beautiful, a true community. In light of that, city council members and I have also prioritized planning for strong neighborhood design. The council plans to adopt the first neighborhood design plan for a square mile of property located west of 10th Street and north of Douglas Parkway. Key principles of this design plan include walkability and bikeability, connectivity, diversity and equity in housing, priority for green space, parks and landscaping, and sustainability. We hope to carry these principles forward to other developing neighborhoods. As we continue to focus on neighborhoods, parks, trails, ponds, and other outdoor amenities are key. One strategic planning priority last year was to complete a greenway trails and drainage way improvements plan. I'm happy to say that this planning effort is now complete and funding has been proposed within this year's budget for the beginning of implementation. The council just approved the Waukee Trails Master Plan, which includes guidance on land use, future greenways, and trail opportunities, and you can view it at waukee.org. As recently as five years ago, we would have been considered under-resourced on parkland, and our residents voiced this as a priority issue, but no longer. As far as parks are concerned, we just keep building them. Sugar Creek Park is expected to open in June. Located near the future Sugar Creek Elementary near Serenity Drive and Ashworth Road, this 4.92 acre neighborhood park includes a playground, pickleball courts, and a shelter. And the new Gem of Waukee, Triumph Park, is also expected to open in June. This 66 acre park located just north of Northwest High School will be a regional destination, serving baseball and softball teams and tournaments, fishing fans, and kids of all abilities looking to explore and play. Much, much gratitude goes out to the Waukee Betterment Foundation and its donors who are making the inclusive features of the park a reality. The Waukee Epic Inclusive Playground is the country's largest inclusive playground to date. The Greater Iowa Credit Union Miracle League Field and the Accessible Fishing Pier on the 11-acre pond will welcome outdoor explorers. When we announced the name of Triumph Park, I shared a story with the attendees of the event. My husband's father was quadriplegic. Growing up, my husband and his father could not play together at parks due to accessibility. His father couldn't even get onto many of the ball fields where he played baseball. Triumph Park has a special place in my heart, and I know for many residents who have family members with disabilities. We are thrilled to be able to have all members of our community access the park and play together, no matter their age or abilities. Let's see how construction has been going.
Thank you to Larson Construction for providing most of the aerial footage for that video. We hope to see you all there when we open this triumphant facility in June. I would like to thank the Waukee Leadership Institute for its work to raise funds for improvements at the Downtown Triangle Park. The team plans to add plants and flowers, include a musical sculpture, and add benches and picnic tables. We are always appreciative of the Waukee Leadership Class contributions to the city. As we move forward, we are focused on how we can differentiate Waukee. In one effort, city officials are starting the process to create a public art commission, a long-term initiative to further beautify our community. I'm very excited about this initiative and we'll share more information soon. Waukee Police and Fire Department team members are currently working with city administration and other consultants to make plans for the future Waukee Public Safety Building. Public safety needs, including fire and EMS, continue to grow right along with the increase in population and expansion of our borders. The departments and their growing employee rosters are soon to outgrow the current facility on LA Grant Parkway. The new building, our second public safety facility, is expected to open in 2025 and will be located north of Hickman Road along T Avenue. Another consideration regionally is how to more proactively address mental health crises. Our public safety teams are often on the front lines and may not always have the resources they need. Our Waukee Police Department is leading the way, working on a multi-agency collaboration to provide more assistance in responding to calls that involve mental health issues. While in its infancy, this partnership will work to create solutions throughout the region and include mental health professionals from the initial contact. And kudos as well to our Waukee Fire Department for their proactive approach to developing talent and engaging with our Waukee residents. They are one of several city departments that partner with the Waukee Community School District's aspiring professionals experience located in this very building. For those who are not familiar with APEX, it's a high school program that draws on expertise of business partners to bring real world experience to students as they explore career opportunities. Now the fire department has joined forces with APEX to offer a paramedics curriculum beginning with the 2022-2023 school year, and we're very excited to see it come to fruition. We've all been through a lot the last two years, and the global health public situation, public health situation is somewhat stabilizing now. Spring weather seems to be trickling in here in Iowa, although not today. It feels as if we're about to come out of hibernation. As we do, we can't wait to see you enjoy and take advantage of all Waukee has to offer. City and community events and festivals, such as the Easter Egg Hunt, Art Festival, the Celebration of Independence, will all bring neighbors to Centennial Park. Look for additional events at this year's 4th of July, led by our park board. Gather with friends old and new at Waukee summer camps, classes, sports leagues, explore a good, good book, or check out STEM kits at the Waukee Public Library. Breathe in spring air while biking on our Waukee trails or playing pickleball at Fox Creek Park. Check out the Waukee businesses in the downtown, historic downtown triangle or along Hickman Road corridor. Join us for the opening of Triumph Park or at the splash pad. Regardless of your age, interests, or affiliations, Waukee offers opportunities for everyone. We're all busy. Change is constant. But at the heart of this community is just that, community. We are your hometown. Let's continue to build on that foundation together. The City Council and I, all one of them, uh, Ben and I will be, stick around for a little bit. Feel free to visit us if you have questions. Otherwise, we are always available via email and we would love to hear from you. Thank you all for coming tonight.